Hey there, this is your girl Shawanda, and you're listening to Refreshing the Soul Podcast, a show where we bring our experiences and God's truth to refresh the heavy and hard places in your soul. From anxiety to unforgiveness, we'll learn how to come to an honest place in our souls and uproot those hidden lies so that you can discover the unique expression God created you to be in this world. Welcome back to Refreshing the Soul Podcast. I'm your host, Shawanda Williams. I am so happy for you to be tuning in just to, you know, be refreshed, to find encouragement. And if it's your first time here, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for joining and downloading this podcast. This podcast is just about, you know, hearing what God has to say about something that's going on in your soul, something that could be heavy, something that could be weighing you down. And it's based on the scripture, Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, that, and I'll kind of paraphrase it, that it says, come to me if you are heavy, if you are weary, if you are burdened, and I will give you rest for your soul. He says to take my yoke, it's easy, it's light, and you will find rest for your soul. He says to learn from me. That's how we find rest for our soul. And that word rest in that scripture means to refresh. It means to refresh. The Passion Translation of that scripture, I wanted just to read it really quick of just Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. It says, are you weary carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life for I am your oasis. Wow. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit is our o- oasis. He's our living water. He is where we get a refreshing for our life. Our life is refreshed. Our life is made new in Him. And sometimes we can be carrying heavy burdens in our soul. Remember, this is rest for the soul, a refreshing for our soul. And a lot of times we'll try to fix the things on the outside of us, or we'll try to stay away from the things that's on the outside of us. But God says, no, I want to refresh the place on the inside of you that's heavy. And so each month we go over a topic that God has laid on my heart to talk about, to refresh your souls with, and to also refresh my soul. You know, don't get it twisted. When I am speaking and ministering, I am ministering to myself. I bring this back to my kids. Like, this is a journey that we're all on together. And so if you missed any of the prior episodes, I want you to go back. In January, we started off with Refreshing the Wounded Soul. In February, Refreshing the Inadequate Soul. In March, refreshing the controlling soul. In April, we refresh the ashamed soul. In May, we refresh the anxious soul. And then just now in June, we refresh the depressed soul. And those were just awesome podcasts. The way that God led me into those topics were just mind-blowing. I thought I had a way of how this podcast was going to go, but... Holy Spirit said, no, we're going to we're going to talk about these things. And and I'm honored that we could talk about it. Right. We need more conversation. We need more people talking about the things that we really deal with in real life and how this word can apply to those places. Like God wants this word to come alive to you. He doesn't want it to be pages or words that's just written on a book that we never tap into and and can find life out of, can find refreshing out of. And I'm here to tell you, God has just restored a lot of things in my soul. And in it, I'm also seeing how he's restoring my life, how he's bringing my family back together, how he's just teaching me how to be a better mom. Like that's that, you know, I'm taking on his yoke, his way of doing things. And I'm learning from him. There are things that I have ran away from my entire life because of what I thought I had to do and the way I had to do it. And it was just too stressful, (laughs) you know, just from all kinds of things. And now I see myself doing way more than what I used to run from. And 
there is no stress. There is no overwhelming. There is no heaviness. It really is light. It really is easy because I've tapped into the way Jesus does it. I have learned from him and I'm still learning from him, really. And so anyway, let's get into this month, July, the topic for Refreshing the Soul podcast. We are going to talk about fear. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Refreshing the fearful soul. Fear, man, this is a big one, you guys. I find that it is one of those yokes. You know, it says, take my yoke. It is, that's a heavy yoke. And sometimes we don't even realize that fear is at the root of almost every kind of brokenness and even the things that seem so subtle that we do and we don't even realize why we're doing it or the fact that it could be coming from fear. Like it's a root and it's probably one of the ones that I believe that most people deal with, that I deal with. And this month, he's like, it's time to refresh this place of fear. And let's just cover real quickly what fear is. I'm just going to read the definition that I looked up on Google. Fear is a natural, powerful, and primitive human emotion. It involves a universal biochemical response as well as a high individual emotional response. Fear alerts us to the presence of danger or the threat of harm, whether that danger is physical or psychological. And so right now, I really want to deal with the fear that is alerting us because of something that is dangerous or something that feels like you're going to be threatened of harm that is psychological, that is in the soul. And so today, let's talk about overcoming the fear of rejection, like the fear of rejection. Who likes to be rejected? No one. I don't like to be rejected. It don't feel good. It it doesn't. But, you know, now I'm thinking about this definition, like what is the threat? What is the harm in being rejected? I think this is this feeling of just like who I am at the core is not enough. Like who I am is not is of less value. And I think it just threats us. It makes us feel, it makes us feel like our value, our worth, the core of who we are is, is threatened, is challenged, is at, is being harmed. And we don't want that place to be harmed, right? We want to protect that place. We don't want to be hurt in that place. So when we fear being rejected, it will keep us out of It would keep us from being our true selves sometimes. I actually wrote down quite a bit, not just keep us from being ourselves, but we'll even compromise our true selves. Like we won't be completely honest, right? We may feel like if we're completely honest, when they know this part about me, it won't be accepted. It also, you know, fear of rejection, it keeps us from just speaking up for ourselves. Again, it will this truth of me cause ridicule? Will it cause them to pick on me? Will it cause them to to look at me differently? You know, I think, you know, now that I think about it, when I was younger, I was picked on a lot for the way I dressed, for just things about me that was just, like, I feel like it was me. Like, I couldn't change a lot of it. I was picked on for the way I talked. I've just just picked on for being different. Like, I just acted different. People automatically assumed I was like a pastor's kid and I think there were was a time too where I didn't I didn't wear pants I couldn't wear pants so you know just picked on for those things and I believe like some of it stemmed from there where I just I felt what it felt like at a young age to be rejected for who I was and it started to shape my mindset toward myself right? It started to shape the way I handled myself around people. And, you know, I'm just wondering for you today, if you look at just that fear of rejection, where did it come from? You know, did some things happen in your childhood that may have shaped the way you look at yourself and the way that you show up in this world? And 
let's keep talking about it, you know, because I think I want to show you some things that God has showed me on how I'm walking this thing out now on how to overcome this place of fear of being rejected. You know, also this when we fear rejection, it can keep us from following God. Like there are places <laughs> and things that God wants us to do that takes us out of the comfort zone of who we even know ourselves to be. Right. God is forever making us into the image of his son. Right. That's what the word says. He's he's making us to look more and more like Jesus and Jesus. Number one, he was rejected. All right. I believe a lot of us got that he was rejected. So there's a lot of places that Jesus went into where he was not accepted. Jesus pushed the norm of religion. He pushed a lot of boundaries. And I'm not saying that Jesus was God, but Jesus was also fully human. And I believe those feelings did not feel good. Not just the physical feeling of Jesus being beaten on a cross, but can we talk about the psychological feeling of being rejected? Those things did not feel good, but fear did not stop him. He continued to follow God. There was a bigger purpose. There was a bigger will that had to be accomplished, and he knew who he was. And so being made more and more like Jesus, to look like Jesus in this earth, to be Jesus' hands and feet in this earth, God's going to call us to some things that is going to feel uncomfortable, that's going to put us in places where people, are not everyone's going to like us. And if we continue to allow fear of being rejected to settle in our souls, we are going to be too timid to move forward because that is going to seem so costly. That's going to seem too much of a risk to our value, to our identity. You know, so it'll also keep us from fulfilling our purpose then, right? It'll keep us from helping others. And there are times we can help others and we can benefit others by even making them uncomfortable. I think sometimes we we fear rejection. So we'll mold into this person that we believe that people have to accept or who we think people want us to be. And we're keeping them in a comfortable place. We're keeping them from seeing themselves the way that God is trying to show them because we don't want to hurt them. We don't want them to be uncomfortable. But there's some things that God may say, no, you need to speak the truth to them. You need to tell them that's not right. Because now I'm no longer helping them and being who I need to be to them because of I fear of how they're going to look at me. I fear of what they're going to say. I fear being rejected. And I'm just listing out some things that I, I realize, you know, when we fear rejection, where it cripples us at and how it cripples others. And so this topic made me think about when I was in college, I was working here and there. And I remember just like, man, I just want to get a, a better paying job. So I found this, I found a job. It was a telemarketing job. So real quick, if you've ever taken a telemarketing job, I want you to raise your hand. I can't see it right now, but raise your hand. <laughs> Have anybody ever did a telemarketing job? Listen, I knew what it was, but I didn't really know what it was. So I just, all I remember was I'm going to get paid like $12, $15 an hour, right? And it was a lot more than working at a fast food restaurant. And so I'm like, let me try it. You know, I may be good at it. I'm just getting on the phone and asking people you know, questions, very simple, right? Let me tell y'all something. I was hired. I worked one day and that was my last day. My first day was my last day. <laughs> I had no clue it would be that brutal. I'm telling you people hung up in my face. People cursed me out. People were, they were like, take me off the list. Now there was probably like one person that was a little interested in whatever I was selling and I think it was like an old lady or old man. I can't really remember, but it was not worth it. The rejection, the ridicule, the cursing out, all of that, that I felt on the other line, it was not worth the $12, <laughs> the $15 that I made an hour for that. 
It just wasn't worth it. And I think that's how it is when it comes to the fear of rejection. The cost of it versus the value of our identity is like one side is weighing more than the other. The cost of rejection versus the value of this thing that God wants me to do is like, uh. So how do we move that? How do we tilt that? Because I believe that if you're listening to this podcast right now, that you want to overcome this fear of being rejected. You don't want it to be a yoke anymore. You don't want it to lead you and move you. There are things I believe that you want to do what God has called you to do, but you keep finding yourself being pulled back into a place where fear is gripping your heart and it's too costly. Okay. I have three words for you and we're going to talk about how these three words is going to relate into overcoming the fear of rejection. The first word is peace. The second word is self-control. And the third word is walk. Peace, self-control, walk. All right. So let's start off in the scripture. John 14, 27. John 14, 27. And this is what God showed me, guys. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, this peace, the first thing I I realized with this scripture This peace, he says, I leave it with you. My peace, I give to you. Right now, I want you to understand you believe in Jesus. You accepted him as your Lord and Savior. You have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You have peace. You have the peace of God. The peace of God is on the inside of you. Receive his peace. Accept peace his peace, convince yourself that I actually have peace that Jesus has left for me. It's not the peace that the world gives. And I'm going to tell you, we can look for peace in being accepted and validated by the world. That's what the fear of rejection is. The reason why we fear being rejected is because we really have an underlying need for validation or approval. See, if we don't have a need for approval from people, the world, those around us, then them rejecting us, there's it, the cost is not that is not that high. You wouldn't be worried about that because you're self sufficient, you're God sufficient in who you are. So instead of this peace and finding validation in the world accepting me and saying, yeah, that's good. Yeah, she's good. Yep, he's good. No, Jesus said, I give you a peace. I have a peace that I've given you. It's not not like the world would give you, but there's a different kind of peace that I can give you. And here's the thing about this peace. I realize that It's the thing that's needed in the place of fear. It is his peace. When we're fearing something, that means our peace has been disturbed in an area, right? That goes back to that definition. You, you, there's a threat. There's a threat of harm. There's danger. Like something's alerting you that my peace is disturbed here. So in the place of fear, We need to receive and accept that, no, I have the peace of God. So when that, when you get those emotional alerts, when that comes up, I want you to think, train your soul to start thinking and believing. And I'm saying before, even before you are, you get into the positions of feeling fear, but train your soul right now. No, I have the peace of God. Wake up in the morning. Thank you, Father, for your peace. I receive your peace. Peace lives on the inside of me. I walk with peace. And so that's why he says, don't, you don't have to let your heart be troubled. You don't have to be afraid, 
right? That's at the end of that verse. The beginning of the verse says, is peace that I live with you. So because you have this peace, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be troubled in your heart, right? So that's the first word, peace. I want you to receive his peace. Convince yourself of the peace of God. And we talked about more about that, this peace of God in May, refreshing the anxious soul. So I also encourage you to go back to the that podcast in May. Did, I think, four or five episodes on the anxious soul. And I had Dr. PBJ on there. And we just talked about just, again, the peace of God. And I, I believe those episodes will help you as well. But the peace of God, the peace I leave with you, that peace it gives us the power to not let our heart be troubled. You hear that? It gives us the power to not let our heart be afraid. If we have the peace of this world, meaning I have peace when this world accepts me, when I'm validated by people, then my heart will stay in a place where I'm going to be afraid or I'm going to be troubled when they don't accept me, when they don't when they, when they don't validate me, when they begin to reject me, I'm going to have unrest in a place where I have to step out and do something that I don't feel like I can do and I could possibly be rejected by the world. But Jesus says, but I give you a peace and it's not the, it's not the peace of, of the world. I can give you a peace where the world will reject you, but you because you are sufficient in me, because you know I'm with you, I'm never going to reject you. I'm not going to separate myself from you, then you can have a peace that is sufficient, that is not hinged on approval of me because I approve you. That doesn't, that's not going anywhere because listen, the world system, culture, people, they, they are fickle. (laughs) They are so fickle. And one thing I'm training myself daily is to accept the peace of God and know that I'm not without it. It's until the day I choose to believe that I don't have peace, that Jesus is not here. That is not some, that's not a choice that Jesus makes. That's not something that he's, he, Holy Spirit is gonna be like, oh, I'm done with Shawanda. No, I have to believe that. So right now, if you know that you deal with fear, I don't want you to wait until fear comes. I want you to start making a a choice that I'm gonna believe that I have peace. I accept and I receive the peace of God that's on the inside of me. And I choose to tap into it daily. All right. Second word, self-control, self-control. At the end of that verse, it says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. What does that tell me? That I actually have control over fear. I can let my heart not be troubled. When my heart want to be troubled, I can say, oh no, heart, you can't do that. I'm not going to allow you to go to that place because I have the peace of God. When I get to a place of being, feeling fear, it's not that we won't step into places where nerves and where we feel, uh, where we may feel timid. It doesn't mean that it won't try to come on us, but it just means that when it does, I don't have to let it stay there. I actually can have self-control over this. I think sometimes we forget that we do not have to be ruled by our emotions. You know, something I heard my pastor say about our soul is that we possess a soul. We are a spirit. We possess our soul and we live in a body. We are spirit. We possess a soul. We live in a body. So anything that you have possession of, she said, you have control over. And remember, fear is an emotion. It's in the soul. So I have possession of the fear. I can tell the fear move here. I can make the fear go there. I have control over it. The fruit of the spirit is self-control. You know, it's so funny. I forget about that one fruit right there. <laughs> and Holy Spirit reminded me, no, you have self-control in this area. I know you may be triggered by certain things. I know things may happen and you feel fear. You want to retaliate. You want to react. But I've given you the Holy Spirit where you can you can respond from a place of self-control. And honestly, it goes back to training yourself 
to one, convincing and believing you have the Holy Spirit, which gives me self-control, which gives me peace, which is another fruit, convincing yourself you have it and walking in it, daily walking in it. And that's what that third word is, walk. This is a walk. It's okay if you don't have this tomorrow. It's supposed to be a walk. It's supposed to be a daily journey. It's not something we choose to pick up when we're in a place where we get scared and we try to work on it. No, daily we choose. From day to day, we're making a choice. We're being intentional. We are walking this thing out, believing I have peace, believing I have self-control and that fear does not have to rule me. And so that's it. That's it, Shawanda. That's that's how we begin to overcome fear. Yes. That's those are the things that I have been intentionally making up in my mind to do. There are things that God has called me to do that has made me feel uncomfortable. And I will tell you, because I love God so much, I do them anyway. But then there are things that I found in my soul that, man, I fear rejection here. I fear the place of where this person may say this, or they may think this about me. And God reminded me in the scripture, no, but I've given you peace. So you accept my peace here. Accept too that you have self-control. You do not have to allow fear to control you. You can tell fear what to do. You know, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 also says that God, for God, has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. The easy to read version says, and self-control. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear, right? Our spirit is not that way. Our soul may feel fear, but our spirit, we have to tap into the spirit and say, okay, I have self-control here. Let me use that. I can tell fear. No, you got to go. Peace lives here. Doesn't mean I can't feel it. We're, we're fully human, but we also have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. We still have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of us. Are we going to activate it? Are we going to use it? I'm telling you, I purpose to use it daily because I do not want the fear of what people have to say and what they're going to think to rule me. No more. This is a walk, you guys. Walk out the peace that God has given you. Tap into it. Walk out the self-control. Tap into it every single day. All right, we're going to end with our confessions for the fearful soul. If this is your first time here, at the end of every podcast, I have a confessions for the soul, whatever it is that we're dealing with that month. And I just want you to take the time to believe the words that I am speaking and receive it and confess it with your mouth and with your heart. Okay? Repeat after me. I receive the peace that Jesus has left me with. I no longer find peace in the acceptance of others, but I find peace that I am already approved by God. I will not let my heart be troubled. I will not let my heart be afraid. I realize and recognize this life is a walk. So daily I choose to walk in peace because I have self-control and self-discipline. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, everyone, that wraps up this week's episode. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast so we can get refreshing to those souls who need it. Also, don't forget to head over to Amazon where you can purchase that 30-day devotional Rest for the Soul by yours truly. Um, You want to get it in your hand. And just remember, soul care is self-care. Until next time, bye-bye.